I own it, man. I'll tell you. <laughs> if it's coming, I'm telling you. You're live on everything. <laughs> well, <laughs> so you have to just toss your music up there. Yeah, shut I can't find my file, right? That's all you had in there. Okay. Let me get you. Yeah, it's like this. Hello, white man. White man. White man. Show set. There we go. Hey everybody out there, uh, internationally, going to be starting up just uh, real quick here for a 360 Mindset Performance Talk on KUHSDenver.com, but until then, hang with me as I set things up. Exciting show today on uh, recovery and renewal. Uh, Henry tells me I'm live on both sides right now, so I'm talking to, to everybody, but uh, we'll be right back with you in just a few minutes. Good morning, everybody. This is uh, your host, Lowell Whiteman, on KUHSDenver.com with uh, 360 uh, Mindset uh, Performance Talk. We're going to be uh, sharing a little bit about uh, renewing and recovering today. And uh, before we do that, let me give you just a kind of a set of what's going to be in this, this show today. It, it, it's exciting to me because many times when people talk about renewing and recovering as it relates to elite performance, whether it be athletically or in your business, you're talking about taking a vacation. You're talking, it's the physical side of things. You're talking about napping, perhaps, or relaxing over a great meal with someone. And I'm not going to deny that that's important. What I'm going to ask you to do is think about the other components of helping connect the brain and the body together so that when you come out of this renewal and recovery, you're going to be prepared to really connect and, and execute even, even more proficiently and quicker. So here's a couple of things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about um, mental focusing from the standpoint of taking senses away from you so that when you, when you come back with that sense renewed, you're sharper. Uh, example I gave you last week was taking away vision, covering up your sight so that you're going to be able to see things quicker. Uh, and as you practice that, it's going to be uh, helpful for you to be more responsive. Uh, but I'm going to add to that today. We're going to talk about things like essential oils. We're going to talk about colors and shapes. And for our, a listener last week, we're going to talk about music. <clears throat> we're going to excuse me. We're going to talk about music and how that's influential when you add it into your environment in ways that really is in alignment with who you are and how you perform. I can't tell you how many times when I walk into a locker room on a pregame visit. Uh, you see, you know, bodies bent over. I'll, I'll back up a little bit. Your bodies are bent over and they've got their headphones on, you know, and they're, they're listening to their tunes. And you see very little movement, meaning that they're not really into the music. They're absorbing it and thinking about, perhaps they're thinking about plays or they're thinking about the opponent. Well, we're going to talk about that as it relates to recovering and renewing. Because I of, I'm of the opinion that you don't need as much of that environmental awareness immediately before a contest as much as you need it way before the contest and practicing in ways that bring certain environmental cues, environmental um, 
influences so that you know, how am I going to respond when I see this? How am I going to respond when I feel this? Here's an example of that that relates to our first segment on mindset. And it relates to, uh, well, hold on. Before I do that, let me ask you guys out there to send your comments in. Send your comments in to KUHS Denver um, Facebook page. Uh, that's KUHS Radio TV Denver, our Facebook page. And, and, and talk to me a little bit. Share your ideas as I'm sharing with you. And give me some of your questions and what you want to hear from me and uh, talk about this morning. Uh, as I bring to you uh, some of these situations about renewing and recovering. Uh, we're on uh, KUHSDenver.com on our website, but also send your comments to the Facebook page at KUHS Radio TV Denver and uh, tell me what you think. Um, so what I was starting to say to you about the mindset is an example around a police kicker or a punter. In either case, both work. And, you know, every, every game I worked with uh, uh, teams, I would always have the pregame warm-ups. I'd spend a lot of time with skill positions, you know, quarterbacks, receivers, um, and kickers, and, and punters. And at the beginning of a game, the weather is one condition, and apparently those of us in Colorado, we know that moments later, the weather can change just like that. Well, when it's a kicker and he goes out and gets this feeling of how the weather is, like there's perhaps no wind at all, not even a whisper of a wind. And then when they get out on the field after pregame warm-ups and the kickoff happens and they see, oh, goodness, here we go. I've got the flags are flipping. It's twisting around in the stadium. Uh, they can imagine almost anything because now they don't have a chance to practice against that kind of condition. So <clears throat> what I have said on many occasions is make sure you prepare. You prepare, then you practice, and then you perform. Well, that's easily said in conditions that were one way at the beginning of a contest and in another way in the midst of the contest. So what do you do? What do you do with your mindset to, in the moment, recover and renew? Because you've been kind of pushed off your kilter a little bit uh, when the, you come out on the field as a kicker, and now you see the wind is cutting across from right to left. Uh, and maybe uh, with this team, you were told by coaches, it could come down to a field goal to win the game because that's how competitive we're going to be. And as I say that, I want to remind you that the mindset for this weekend should be focused on college football because college football opens up this weekend. That's why I'm wearing my, you know, protect the house uh, and make sure that you're uh, taking a look at college football this weekend uh, at CSU and Fort Collins are going to play the uh, Oregon State uh, Beavers. Uh, one of my, my colleagues is a coach up there, Dave Baldwin. Shout outs to Dave. I know they're, well, they're either right now to head to Fort Collins or they're actually on the plane heading this way um, to be playing tomorrow at uh, midday, around lunchtime is when the game, the game starts at 11.20, 11.30, somewhere in there. Uh, but as I'm saying that, they're going to be going through these routines uh, from now through the rest of the season of college football as well as the pro season, and conditions change. So there is there is this mindset of renewing and recovering in the moment. And now let's say you extend this example out. The kicker comes out on the field, and he's he's thinking about, I'm hoping, he's thinking about uh, that the, the routine we went through about you know, following through, head down, imagining the extension of your foot through to the, the target point. But now he's got this factory he can't control. He's got this wind that's out there, this movement. And perhaps, let's add something else. Maybe the temperature came down. And maybe he's a, he's a player that, you know, when the temperature gets cooler, I'm not as good as I want to be because I like to stay warm. I like to stay nice and uh, get the sweat going so I'm nice and uh, flexible on the field. So he's got all these things that can interchange into his mindset and, and take him off kilter. Well, here's what you do. You're in that moment. You stay in the now. You've got that reflection back on your preparation and how you prepare. Even though the conditions are different, you've practiced within the conditions that you have confidence in what you know you can control. You know you control the, your, your approach to the ball, you know you uh, control the acceleration of your leg through the ball, and you know you control your mindset of the vision of that ball going through the uprights. What you don't control is mother nature. So when you go out there, what we have, what I've talked about with my guys in the skill positions, in, especially the place kickers, is when those out of your control kind of circumstances happen, you have a strategy. Now, it may not be 
uh, the ultimate strategy, but it might be enough to raise the probability that you're going to successfully accomplish working through <coughs> excuse me, what you don't control, like the win. So here's what we've done and what I've done in the past with these skill positions on mindset for being able to renew and recover in the moment for those factors you don't control. So now we're at the performance piece. Remember we talked about prepare, practice, perform. Now I'm at the perform part. Well, the perform part is you know where the wind is coming. Let's say it's pushing right to left and you're a right foot kicker. And the first field goal you have <clears throat> is on the right hash mark. So that means the wind is going to push from right to left and push the ball into the middle. So you might want to just make sure you target to the right upright so the wind pushes it into the middle rather than targeting to the center where it could push it outside. So those are some strategies that you know you can control that. You can control your targeting just like you can control your foot, your acceleration of your leg, the placement of your, your uh, landing leg, and really get it going. And that's what, we, what I ask my guys to do, but we set it up with strategies and methods beforehand anticipating any, any possibility of factors that we don't control to be present during our performance. Now, no guarantees, but I can tell you this. The probabilities rise dramatically in your favor <clears throat> when you have gone through a process of preparing that anticipates those things you don't control. And then when you can add in practice some of that component of what you don't control, like maybe uh, the, 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 the school, the team can put in a big fan <clears throat> and blow, blow the wind. Or maybe you can just imagine that the wind is blowing and practice going for the, the right upright. And then, you know, knowing you're going to come really close to because you don't have the wind, but you're trying to create conditions that will simulate what you're doing. So renew and replay, a renew and recovery is a way for you to prepare for the next moment of competition, but it's also something to be aware of in the moment so that you can enhance your resiliency. I always compare or combine um, discussions in the mindset uh, portion of uh, my work with the athletes and executives that we talk about um, how do we utilize recovery and renewal techniques with our mindset to help us be resilient when circumstances change that I don't control. Like in my example, it would be the weather. Let's take another example. Let's say it's not the weather, and let's say it's a setting where I'm going to a big meeting, I've got a presentation to make, and it's the, the last of the presentations I think I'll have to make before I can actually go for a close and, and bring the, the audience that are, that, that are decision makers into the play of signing the documents and making, and making the deal with me. Well, there's lots of deal making going on here at KUHSDenver.com, let me tell you that. We'll talk a little bit about what's going on this weekend and the, the scary components that um, people will be thinking about in their mindset about ghosts and all the recovery that they might, might have at this uh, great event this weekend. Uh, but we'll talk about that in just a second. And <clears throat> it, but it's, it's apropos here because you go into a setting and there can be some ghosts and gremlins that arise out of the crowd that you had no idea that were going to happen because you're talking about ideas and thoughts products perhaps, you know, tangible things, or maybe it's a service that's not as tangible, but you're, you're in this discussion and you really don't know how your words are going to impact the people in your audience. Now, you're going to ask for questions so that you get a pulse of what uh, people are, are thinking. You're going to go through your steps of good sales uh, presentation management to get to the close and, and uh, have them you know, write that check and, and engage you on the next, next product or service you're providing for them. Well, just like with my kicker, the question becomes in your mindset, what, what happens when I get that question that I didn't anticipate? I'm not sure what happened. And here's what I do. It's what's called in the sales business, the pregnant pause. Because you are in control. You have practiced, you prepared your sessions. You've got all those tools and systems you need in that preparation with you. You're pra you've practiced it with your colleagues to, to go through whatever you can, and now you're performing it. And in that process, a question comes up. Didn't anticipate it. Kind of throws you off a little bit. 
I would ask you to back up, literally, in, in most cases, just back up so that people see that you're, you're being reflective and you just take a breath. And you, and you, and you let them absorb that and, and share, share with them through that body posture and that nonverbal that you're in control of this. Because the one, the, well, not the one, the first thing that you need to make sure of is that you represent you're still in control. Just like the elite athlete on the playing field, they're going to make sure that they are resilient enough to recover quickly and their body movement the, and then the strength and power with which they deliver their next move are, are going to show the opponent their confidence and their resiliency. The same thing is true in the boardroom or the presentation in that boardroom. You want to make sure that your mindset through your body language shows the audience, I got this. I'm in charge of this. You're in my space right now. You address the question, and I'm not, I'm not going to give you necessarily the training methods that I've used in the past on how to, how to respond to a given question. Some people say you need to rephrase the question so the person who asks it realizes that you understood them. Uh, I think the bottom line here is that you need to, to create an, an, an action on your part that allows the person who asked the question to, to know that you heard them and that you are going to address everything they said to you. So that could be a review of the question. It could be a restatement or not a restatement, just a simple point-by-point -point review. But you're going to acknowledge them and give them uh, the honor of, uh, of your recognition of them. That's hugely important uh, to do. Now, from that point, it's a, it's a matter of asking them for understanding about what they really want. Because most people's questions are not always stated clearly about what they really want. And this doesn't matter whether you're in the international crowd or domestically. Um, I think it, it's just, it's a human nature thing, especially in the world of business. When you can relate to somebody with confidence and say to them, tell me really what you're really looking for here. I, I want to make sure that I really understand what, you're, what you want. So your renewal and recovery in that process is, is, is uh, received and accomplished through maintaining the dialogue. Uh, in, in critical situations uh, with uh, police officers and quick first responders, like say in a hostage situation, they say, keep them talking. Uh, always address their needs, constantly validate their existence. You know, you basically you're wasting time, you know, to get them to say, hey, I'll, I'll get you that money as soon as we can, but it's going to take us a while. Uh, what else can I do for you while we're waiting? Eat some food. <laughs> you know, so it's, I'm not, I'm not trying to put you down to that level, but the, the theory and the process of renewing and recovering in the moment is pretty much the same. You honor people, you respect them, you acknowledge that you heard them, and you continue to ask them, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? So those are a couple examples in our mindset segment about um, how to deal with renewal and recovery. And you heard me say a couple times, to renew and recover, to be resilient quickly, to get back, what that I mean by that is get back to your high level of performance, you have, you have uh, a need to have prepared it, uh, practiced it, and be ready to perform in those moments when you're called upon to perform. And that's regardless of the environment. So in our next segment, when we talk about skills, we're going to talk a little bit about environment. But before I do that, let me, let me take a minute, uh, actually less than a minute, about 90 seconds. What is that more than a minute? I'm not good at math today. I had a long night. We're going to talk a little bit about um, getting to know yourself well enough so that when you're, when you're asked to, in the moment, immediately renew and recover, <clears throat> you're, prepared, you're prepared to do that. Um, and here's what I'm saying to you. I have developed an assessment tool called the RMP16. You go to 360mindset.com, click on the RMP16 tab, and, and look at the 16 factors that give you a number on human desires, human desires that everybody has. It's not that it's just for you. It will at the end when you get the results, but it's 16 desires that apply to all human beings. It took 30 years for my colleague, Stephen Reese, to get to that level of understanding. But that's the right way to do it. That's the right way to understand who you are at an organic level so that when you uh, uh, participate in the RMP16, you know the results you're going to get are going to be on target for you. It's not going to ask you to change yourself. It's not going to ask you to put yourself in a little box, you know, that you're an RJPQ, whatever. It's going to say to you, here's what 
30 years of study in human behavior has is saying about you as a person in these 16 factors. Why is that important? Whether you're an athlete or an executive, it's important because you get to answer questions like this. Why am I here? What, what am I going to get out of being here? And it's important to know who you are so that you can put yourself in, in environments that's going to maximize your effort in return. Simplest example I can give you, how many times you've been to a meeting when you didn't know why you were there? Because it wasn't your meeting. Or it was, it was you were asked to attend from somebody who really didn't know you and didn't know why they were asking you to be there. It's just because you're part of the organizational chart to bring you to the meeting. Well, that's the RMP 16. You can find it at uh, 360mindset.com. Please take a look at it. Uh, and also, let me remind you, send in your comments on Facebook page, KUHS, Den or KUHS Radio TV Denver, and send us your comments. Uh, let us know, let me know what you're thinking about on our show today because we're talking about renewal and recovery. Um, so our next segment is on skills, and we're going to talk a little bit about environment in the skills segment. So I want you to think about this. You're listening to me. Where are you at? Are you in your, your, your room, in your office, at the house, you got your in your car? Where are you? And when you when you examine that, now be safe. When you're if you're in your car, don't be looking around and you know not paying attention to the, the traffic. Consider not only why am I here, but also what is this environment doing for me or to me to cause me to be either diminished or enhanced in my performance in this moment. Now, let's take the simple example, the car. You're in your car, you're listening to the radio, or and you're, you're driving along, and you're hearing me talk. What are you seeing? Is your vision channeled to just the front end of your vehicle and not really aware of the vehicles around you or in front of you or the scenery out in front of you that you need to be aware of? Now, that's not a difficult stuff to imagine, is it? But when we experience thinking and focus on it, what do we get from it? Well, we get maybe an increased potential for being safe and aware of the lunacy of drivers on the road. You know, be a defensive driver, as my, my dad would say to me uh, when I was a kid learning how to drive. Be defensive because there's way too many idiots out there that not exa aren't exactly doing what they're supposed to do on the road. Um, so being aware of that improves, improves your, your sensitivity or your, and your um, awareness to what's going on. And, and then it, it causes your skills, your hand-eye coordination, your motor skills in your arms, in your legs, your, your foot on the pedal uh, for gas, a, a brake, a clutch perhaps, if you're driving a, a stick shift a car. Um, those are getting a little antiquated, aren't they? We've got those paddle things now. We've got the automatic, this is a, a contradiction of terms, the automatic manual. <laughs> I love it, but it's it's not what it used to be when I was a kid. You know, three on the tree. Can you relate to that? So you're talking about putting your skill sets together in this small example of the car. And <clears throat> now in our theme today, renewal and recovery, let's say somebody on your right is trying to change lanes in front of you, but they base, based on the way they're moving, they don't know you're there. What do you do? How fast is it coming to you? Well, you're equating this, your skill sets, your vision, your hearing, your body, your brain are all... Uh, bringing this information in at, at very quick speeds, and you do something, right? If your awareness is not heightened, if you were messing with the dials on the radio, uh, if you were paying attention to just the front of the car and not everything around you, you may not respond in an effective way. Your skills will not be there to help you to recover and thereby move on to renew. Because I know for me, anytime I've had anybody do something uh, wacky on the roadways, uh, I've I've got a little you know got a little nervous got a little excited you got to have some have some recovery uh, uh, and some renewal after you've uh, had that experience so that's a simple example let's expand it though into the skill sets that you're going to call upon in these very quick powerful high skill areas of ex execution whether it's an athlete on the field or a uh, uh, first responder out on the streets with uh, police and fire, or maybe it's some of the people that I've worked with in the military uh, and special forces. The consequences of your skills not being renewed and recovered from the previous sets come into play very quickly. If you haven't done what it takes to renew and recover in some of these positions and these jobs that people have, or career paths they have, there are some fairly dire consequences. 
in the military, special forces people, it's without a doubt. They know very clearly it's kill or be killed. And that that's that's where your recovery and renewal is important because now in the military, recovery and, re and renewal is is looking at the skill sets of people uh, trying to self-medicate. They're trying to self-medicate, so their skill sets get diminished dramatically, and they don't they don't talk about that. So environment has a huge impact on what it leaves you when you go back to your home uh, or you go back to your office to try to recover and renew. Now, I want to make sure I'm very clear. There's lots I deal with a lot of extremes, um, and then I deal with the more sublime kind of things. Obviously, on a football field or a baseball field, basketball court, tennis court. Uh, what have you in the, in the sports world, the, 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 the dire consequences are you lose a point. Uh, you don't make the block. Uh, the pass doesn't quite drop in where it should uh, to score the touchdown over the defense, the zone defense. Uh, those are not the same consequences of the lack of skill being renewed and recovered as you might have with a oil rig operator uh, pumping oil and flammables out of the earth or, or a firefighter going into a flaming building um, and knowing what the signs are. They have to be dramatically aware of their environment and what's going on. Uh, that's very, very, very important. Uh, so the skill you have, I want, I'm trying to emphasize to you, the skill that you have to be able to renew and recover, both in the prep, practice, and performance side of things before you get to these events, is dramatically impacted by the, the, the environment that you're in. So I'm going to ask you to do this, a little homework, if you will. Try to take a look at your world as you walk down the street or as you should go into your home. Maybe let's take your home, for example. You walk into your house and you're sitting there in your, in your home. What about the room you're in right now have you not seen before? Or maybe you've seen it, but you haven't paid attention to it. You didn't realize that something got moved on the table or the, or the, the dressers or the bookshelves or... Uh, any number of things. Or maybe there's something not in the room that usually is there, but you just didn't know that that happened. Now, it may not be in, of any consequence of what you observe, because what I'm doing is asking you to tent, uh, test your ability to understand what the environment provides to you. I know for me, on certain, certain times of the year, I want to have uh, blankets in the room, or I want to have uh, my uh, a, a sweater or something nearby. It's just, just part of what Colorado weather brings us, right? Uh, that, that has an impact on my ability to renew and recover. I want to feel good. I want to get rested in a, as a simple example. So environment has a lot to do with it. Now, what about in your environment are some of the factors that might influence you in different ways? Two, two that I really focus on that not a lot of people think about in, in, a, in a serious way as influencing your performance. That's colors and music. I, I give this example uh, because it, it's both comical and, and interesting when you consider the characters. Uh, it, it considers Bo Schembechler. I hope you know who Bo Schembechler is. Uh, he was uh, athletic director at University of Michigan and the head football coach during a dynasty period of, of uh, national football prominence and dominance uh, for the Michigan Wolverines. And then there was this team from the University of Iowa and Hayden Fry. And Hayden Fry in his first few years at the University of Iowa knew of the history, the, the very recent history of how badly Iowa Hawkeyes played against the University of Michigan. Because Bo Schembe it was Bo Schembechler. It was the Wolverines of Michigan coming into the Iowa Hawkeye arena at Ky uh, Niall Kinnick Stadium. So <laughs> apparently uh, in um, Hayden Fry's past, he had done some work in uh, criminal justice and had, stu had studied some things and had seen some reports about the influence of color in the holding cells uh, in uh, police departments. So he decided that he was going to paint the opposing locker room's uh, walls with a color that was going to reduce the... the uh, the preponderance, the, the, the occurrence of, of amping up, arousing that, that animal, that savage life kind of uh, response to getting aggressive, being out there and just getting it going. And he painted the locker room pink, uh, which, is, which is notable in papers, theoretical papers written by criminologists in the state of California 
holding cells in the violent criminals holding cells or agitated uh, people in their holding cells it's pink and at the at the half of the game Iowa was up I don't remember the score I'll say they were up a, they were up a more than a margin than anybody would expect let's say it was 14 to nothing something just unbelievable and so Bo Schembechler to the fans uh, surprise and perhaps disgust did not come out on time he was complaining to the referees that something about this locker room was influencing the performance of his players. Well, because there was nobody of any kind of uh, decision-making power to change what was going on, they eventually got Bo and the team out. And uh, interestingly enough, the margin of, of, of win for Iowa was reduced. It wasn't 14 points, but they won that game. Um, and and then eventually Hayden Fry came clean and said this is what he did and why he did it. Uh, and, in, and, and in many cases at that time, there was no violation of any rules with the NCAA. But it was it's to my point about the environment through color will influence your behavior, will influence who you are. It also takes awareness of that because there's the other side of it. Certain colors enhance it, make it really... Uh, good for you to be around a certain color like there are greens shades of green are great for stimulating the cerebral cortex for uh, cognitive response on an intellectual level I'm not saying you're going to be smart if you look at green I'm saying that whatever smarts you have will be more sensitized to being released in the moments that, that you want to call upon them. and there's other examples of colors and how they influence just like uh, smells temperature but also figures, the three-dimensional component. Uh, I encourage coaches, moms and dads, to uh, take their, their kids and their players uh, to take a look at the environment, even if it's an environment they've been to before, because the environment could change. I mean, I've had my players in basketball. Uh, we go to a gym that we've been to before, and I still have them go. We get there a little early, uh, and they walk around the, the stadium uh, or the, the arena. They sit in the stands. They I ask, actually ask them to touch the floor, you know, touch the walls. Just get comfortable and familiar with that environment. Well, that uh, that ends our skills uh, set. I want to have an influence on your ability to renew and recover, not only before you get to the event, but while you're there. Taking a moment to maybe, maybe there's a color in the arena that you just really, it's really soothing. Well, you take a look at it because you're in a, in a moment in the game where you're not very soothed. It, you're a little upset and you need to get kind of bring it down a little bit. Uh, get it, get it into that, get your heart rate into that range where you can perform at your max. Uh, special forces would say 140 beats a minute. That's where I want to be to really get amped up and ready to rock. Well, I've gone beyond that. I'm, I've gone to 160 plus in my heart rate because I'm just pissed at what's been going on. I'm not happy with myself. Well, how do you do that? Well, maybe you'll look at a color in the stadium, or maybe it's going to be something you touch. Maybe it's a texture of the bench or a towel, something familiar. Um, I've got players all over the country in many different sports that always have to have certain things in their bag to touch because the texture of that towel or a shirt or something really makes them feel good. For Michael Jordan, it was a pair of powder blue uh, North Carolina uh, shorts that he wore when he was in college. It was the color and well eventually the shorts were just way too short. <laughs> yeah, there's I've got pictures of Michael with the shorts, the blue powder blue shorts, and then he's got the liners all the way down to his knees. It, you know, he, he kind of transitioned in fashion style from the days when it was really short shorts to the, the days where they got a little longer. But they were special to him. That made it set up his warm-ups in a way that it felt good to him. So that that uh, are some there are some examples of how environment influences your ability to renew and recover in moments when you need it, right in the event. But I encourage you to prepare, practice, and perform uh, scenarios before you get to those situations. So uh, I'm gonna take a little bit of a breath. Uh, I really, you know, I'm really excited about the renew and recover thing because it's a, it's such an intangible that you can really focus on it and and actually measure it, create practice scenarios that if you're creative, that will help your players get challenged. And the only way you get better is if you challenge yourself. And I don't mean just physically. The physical channels, that's the easy stuff. The tough stuff is making the, the connection. And that's what I do. I help people with connections. I give them strategies and methods on how to connect 
the brain body so that the brain is triggering the body to move in ways that optimizes your performance. So get on my website, 360mindset.com. Sign up for a consultation. Uh, send me an inquiry. Um, like the, the, the three young men that, that inquired last week uh, from uh, the Seattle area, um, uh, two of them are with the Washington uh, Huskies. Um, and it's, it's, I'm, I'm so excited about working with them. Um, and, and I encourage you to do that as well. Um, the uh, website is 360mindset.com. I, I, I'm, sh I'm short of words. That, that's extraordinary that I'm short of words. But I, I'm so passionate about seeing people perform at their highest levels. Even if you are a person who's not necessarily a pro athlete, you're just someone who loves what they do and are passionate about it, and you want to sustain that passion and that performance output. Take a look uh, at 360mindset.com and sign up for a consultation. Uh, send me an inquiry. Ask me a question. Let's get a dialogue started. Speaking of that, KUHS Radio TV Denver, our Facebook page, send me some thoughts there. I'm sure that uh, if you don't if you don't get me giggling at you uh, or asking and responding to you, uh, Henry will be out there. He can he can uh, always uh, look for sharing ideas and thoughts with you. So send me your comment. Tell me what you're thinking. Um, I'd love to uh, see what you're all about. In fact, as I'm asking you to do it, I'm going to send everybody out there one. I'll just say, "How are you?" Please, please call. <laughs> please call. Of course, you know I have to. You have to know how to spell to be able to uh, post it. All right, there I post it. So, I'm, I was done. There we go. All right. So I'm interested in in talking to you whenever you can. Um, we're on our next segment: mental condition. Now, this is mental condition when it comes into renewal recovery. It's a it's a tough one. It's asking. Um, you to really strengthen your imagination and be creative in that preparation stage. Because to renew and recover through preparation, practice, and performance, you got to kind of bring some stuff into your environment that's going to push you and challenge you. Because in practicing, you don't have the real deal, right? You don't have the, you know, the, the defensive line isn't going to get the chance to come across the line and pop you one if you're the quarterback. But you, but you want to have that feeling of having to create something with your feet. Get it going. Make it happen. Um, by the way, quite honestly, I'm not so sure that, that Trevor Simeon's ready to create something with his feet. I know he's working really, really hard to do that, but he's admitted openly that creating something with his feet is uh, one of the challenges he has. Um, so that's an example of uh, creating an environment in your environment um, a practice scenario that you can apply mental conditioning things. Now, before I go too much further, I want to point out something that's happening here. Uh, there's a big festival on the 26th um, of this month, 26th of August of August 2017. Uh, there's uh, the fest, the art festival in Kids Zone is from noon to six, and then there's a concert. Now that art festival for the kids, and well, ain't for anybody, but there's an art festival in the Kids Zone, and it's for everybody. That's free, 12 noon to 6 p.m., um, and then there's a concert from seven to 10. Um, and this is over at uh, Elitch's, Elitch's Theater. And let me just uh, let me just make sure I get all the names here. The concert you gotta you gotta take a look at this. Hazel Miller, Face, Chris Daniels, and the Kings. Basically, what we're trying to do here, with the help of the scientific and cultural community in Denver, and and Elitch's uh, Theater. Uh, the Bliss Fest 333 is trying to bring unity into the community. Um, the kids zone looks great. Climbing walls, all kinds of fun things. Looks like they might have some uh, food trucks out there, face painting, in addition to the music, uh, bouncy house, all those things that me as the adult kid love to play. So check that out. Uh, August 26th, noon to 6 for the kids and the art fest, and from 7 to 10 with the concert featuring Hazel Miller, Face, Chris Daniels and the Kings. Uh, great community effort at the Elix Theater. 
And um, yeah, looking forward to that. All right, so we're talking about mental conditioning and what what you can do in your environment to practice a mental conditioning skill development. Now, here, here's what I want you to do. Uh, last week we talked about the focusing thing. I put two fingers up like a goalpost, you know, get your eyes, get your, you know, that's a good mental focusing drink. But in this case, we're talking about mental conditioning as it relates to recovery and renewal. Now, I'm going to start with the practice part first before we actually get into a contest and, and uh, have to re recover and renew very quickly. You know, we want to be resilient in those moments. But it's that practice and preparation part beforehand that gives us that that, that, that skill set through the mental condition that we can respond quickly. So here's a couple things to do. One of them is take away, take away your senses. Okay, and there are, uh, the vision is the one thing that I, you can take away uh, quickly. Uh, but I also ask you to do this. Put earplugs in your ears when you're, when you're doing things um, around the house or at work and, and be aware of what you feel uh, when you sit at your desk. What does your, your desktop table feel like? Um, so that you get a sensitivity as to what possibly is a distraction on your desk. When you take away hearing, what, what one sense do you believe might get enhanced qu the quickest? And I'll give you the answer to that. That's your vision. Your vision it becomes, to, becomes the one sense that overcompensates for the reduction in the hearing. And that's really important. And here's the perspective I want you to have on this for, so you can really amp up your mental conditioning skills. Is that the, the vision, you start to see things more detail and, and more of a wider angle of it. Now, what that does is, if you're at a desk, like an, uh, an office space that has uh, the, the cubbies, the cubicles in it, you, you know you, you're aware of people that run, walk by your area or maybe your area, you fit, your back faces to a hallway behind you. So if you take the hearing away, you're not going to be as, as, as aware because the, the sounds are not there of people passing by, the noises in the office. So now your scope of vision might perk up and your peripheral vision might perk up because you might be a, you may have a high degree of sensitivity to people sneaking up on you. Some people may not have a high degree of sensitivity to that, but that's the mental condition that you're trying to enhance. <clears throat> your awareness to your space with enhanced vision by taking away your hearing. Now let's flip-flop that. Let's take the vision away. Now in this case, I would ask you to go into an environment where when you take your vision away, first of all, you don't need your vision in the space you're in, you want to enhance your hearing, your awareness to things. Now I, the place I like to do this at is for many buildings in the city that you may work in, there's maybe a little um, uh, a garden area or a big open space that comes into the front door of the building where there's benches and planters full of flowers and maybe a few trees here and there. But you know when you go down there, the sounds are going to enhance because you take the vision away and you will hear more of the traffic, more of the people. And what I'm asking you to do is to differentiate the sounds. Differentiate the sounds. What more do I hear? Do I hear people's footsteps? Do I hear the difference in their footsteps? Do I hear doors open in vehicles, the doors of the building? Uh, do I hear people talking? Can I hear people hugging? Now, this is awareness for this reason. If Let's say, for example, I'm going to be talking to some uh, defensive linemen this weekend, college guys, and what I'm going to be asking you to imagine is if you are an offense, a defensive lineman, your mission is to get through the offensive line and put pressure on the quarterback, running backs, and wide receivers' ability to execute their moves by putting that pressure on. So if you were thinking about that and you had just gone through this mental conditioning drill taking your vision away from you and you heightened your hearing how is that going to help you as a defensive lineman? What's that going to do for you? Well, here's what's going to happen. Because your hearing has perked up, it also causes sensitivity increases in the hair on your arms, the feeling in your hands and your skin. So you get some, get some feeling enhancement. So as you're sitting there listening to all these sounds, touch the bench you're on or the chair you're in. 
uh, or, you know, even your, your, your pant legs, your shoe, you know, just in, test that presumption I'm asking you to think about, about your, your feeling increasing. Because if you're a defensive lineman, one of the key things is, is attack and release. Attack and release. You want to get in there and emphasize something, a technique, whatever the technique is. Maybe, maybe it's you're doing a swim move. You know, or you're, you're, you're just trying to get there as fast as you can, or maybe you see that defense, the offensive lineman set up a certain way, and you're going you're gonna to attack to the left and spin out to the right. Whatever it is, you've got a technique that you want to execute. And this could be a t technique that you want to execute, whether you're a defensive lineman in football or you're an uh, executive at a boardroom desk. You have certain movements that you know are going to be effective for your interaction and performance of certain skill sets. That's why you take in, take in play these exercises to enhance your other senses to, by taking away one other. So in football, it works dramatically. I've actually gotten, well, here's another one example. I think I've mentioned this before. I've got a hockey player who took his senses away on the ice, took his vision away on the ice so that he had to feel what his foot felt like in his skate, what the ice felt like on the blade of his skate, because he's skating backwards. Our goal was to skate faster backwards, more aggressively backwards, and to know when to stop in that environment. We, I would set him up at the face-off circle. He'd have to skate backwards to blue line, then center line, then blue line, and then, then the, the far ice uh, face-off circle, and stop at each one of those places. If he hit the spot, I blew a whistle. If, I, if he didn't hit the spot, I wouldn't blow the whistle, and I would double blow the whistle for him to continue to the next spot. So now he's got these audio uh, elements of mental conditioning so that he gets reinforcement of the, the distance I skated, I'm on. The distance I, I've skated, and I missed. Well, I'll tell you this. My, my uh, hockey guys that we've, I've practiced what I call blind ice with, get such a great sense of the arena for understanding that spatial differences between those markers that their, their uh, skating by coaches gets acknowledged as being freer, more fluid, but still aggressive and very, very accurate with their stick skills on the ice without hesitation. Too often when they skate it, they may hesitate a little bit with their, their stick because they're not sure about the offensive player coming at them. Uh, but now with this renewal and recovery process by using blind ice, they're able to really enhance the mental condition of other senses. Uh, that, that, so I saw you're hearing me get excited about mental conditioning and uh, the things we do. I also do what we call uh, uh, blind, blind flat ground throwing with pitchers. Uh, for targeting enhancement and uh, the feel of uh, arm movement, acceleration of the arm, and uh, sensory skills on their hands to the ball. Uh, many, many players, many pitchers I've worked with uh, find that they have more ball movement because the, the sensitivity of the ball in their hand has been enhanced. So they can release pressure, increase pressure, which changes the rotation and, and power on the ball at certain levels of the themes, of the seams, sorry, seams. And they, uh, they just, they just, get excited. That enhances their whole energy and, and understanding of a game of baseball at a, at a cellular level. So that's our mental conditioning piece on uh, the influence of environment <clears throat> on our ability to renew and recover. Um, as, we, as we move to this next segment, I want to just say thanks to my international crowd out there. Uh, once again, I'll say hey, hey to Peter uh, in the great uh, island of uh, the UK. Uh, hope all, all is well over there and um, all as well internationally to everyone out there be safe and be aware uh, be mindful of your environment like I said with uh, the mental conditioning open up your scope uh, feel it and, and, and believe in it uh, to the level that it makes you better okay so now it's time for me to ask you about um, some mental conditioning tools that we've talked about here before uh, I've showed you a few times uh, some of the things I've used uh, with my players um, one of the things I have that I created was an app called Time to Focus. I'm that close, that close to getting it on to the Android units. So uh, look forward to that. Time to Focus is an iTunes app. It's free. And I have yet to have anybody come back to me and say, you know what, I just don't get this. I don't get it. Most of the comments are, I get it so well, I can't put it down. Um, and it, it looks like a game, 
But what you're doing with time to focus is enhancing your uh, cognitive, your brain power uh, to respond quickly. If you think it, you can respond. Uh, if you want to do it, you can respond quicker. It activates your brain so that you're, you're firing on all cylinders. And it takes seconds, seconds. Uh, the longest unit of time uh, you would play a time to focus is maybe a minute and a half. So um, my, I get my athletes to try to use time to focus as their pregame preparation uh, rather than all that music. Or they can use the music and time to focus together. Uh, but in a minute here, we're going to talk about music in our last segment, uh, performance results. Uh, but I want to emphasize to uh, go to my website. I've got a time to focus uh, component there that can link you right into iTunes to sign up for the game. Uh, it's free. Time to focus. Enjoy it. Uh, it's, it was a great, uh, just a great uh, it's this discovery for me. I, I, was, I fell right into it. Isn't it the greatest thing sometimes, the ones you, or have, you least expect? So, <clears throat> I don't know why my throat's all kind of choked up today. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, maybe it's because I don't have a lot of people sending me comments on KUHS Radio TV Denver Facebook page. I'm all choked up. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit clamped. Um, Please send us some comments. Send me your thoughts about what uh, you're thinking about here uh, with our show today on renewal and recovery. Um, I, I'm kind of pushing some buttons here on my uh, Facebook page with KUHS uh, and trying to get some responses from some folks. I would love to have you just share with me here on KUHS. Denver uh, Radio TV. We've got uh, got some great stuff going on here. I got a lot of people. Oh, okay. Well, all right. We're moving on. Last segment. Performance results. Yes. Okay. So you want to you want to win, right? That is that basically what everybody wants to do. You just want to win. Well, to get the performance results you want, sometimes you need to be challenged. Uh, in the moment. Uh, and sometimes that challenge, challenge that you get is it's beneficial after the fact, but it surprises the daylights out of you. You just kind of go, where'd that come from? Um, I mean, you, you, you adapted okay. You, you kind of adjusted, but you didn't deliver uh, a response back. Um, it, it, with baseball right now, you've got uh, teams trying to vie for spots, uh, for playoffs. Um, one of, the, one of the players that I've had on here for baseball is Curtis Granderson. Uh, you can no longer check Curtis out with the New York Mets. Uh, two weeks ago, the New York Mets uh, uh, took an option and traded uh, Curtis to the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now, for Mets fans, that is just unfortunate. And they uh, shared on uh, social media. Uh, they're not as surprised, yes, uh, disappointment probably more than anything because Kurt, because Curtis is a player's player and a uh, player's a fan to the a player to the fans. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've been around him with uh, moms and dads and kids, and he doesn't stop. He just takes care of everybody that's out there. So the fans are disappointed that the Mets let him go, but for for Curtis, it's a great thing because he's got a chance with a team who has the best record in baseball. Not just just the National League, but in baseball, they have performance results. They have won. Now, as you know, for me, performance results are those little ones before you get to the ones that hit the papers, the win loss record. There are lots of wins and disappointments in process. So I'm very much on process for performance results. But so is Curtis Granderson, and being with the LA Dodgers, he has a chance to continue his process, his daily routines to hopefully get that World Series ring uh, with the team that's got the best record in baseball. But that being said, just because you have performance results at that level does not mean they continue that way every day, day in and day out, so that you can guarantee, or as they say, say down in New Orleans, go on T, you getting the results you want. You can just do the best you can in preparing practicing, and then performing a process in every moment to get you the best chance of accomplishing those wins and losses at the right time. Because there's going to be wins and losses, not just wins. 
So the performance results, <clears throat> using Curtis as an example, um, he was notified <clears throat> Friday night after a Mets game, a night game for the Mets, that he was traded. So that means that was about probably 10 p.m. at the time. He, and they were playing in Detroit. They were playing the Detroit Tigers when he found out. So that would have been 10 or 11 o'clock at night that he, he was told that. And then what Curtis did was he um, took a time to physically say thank you. Go and see Mets staff people, coaches, players, teammates, and say his appreciation for what they had done for him. Who does that? Who does that in business? He's a unique individual. That was captured. Uh, some people caught it on their phones, posted it on social media, so you can check that out on Facebook and uh, YouTube. Then he gets on a plane. Oh, sorry. It was, in, uh, it was a Mets home game. He flew then to Detroit to meet the Dodgers. So he said, said his goodbyes at, a Mets, at the end of the Mets home game uh, out in uh, New York and flew to uh, Detroit and got in at about, got everything settled, got started, was able to go to sleep at 3 a.m. And they had a midday game in Detroit. He played. He, he, he found out when he got there, he was playing. He was starting that day. So typically they get there for like a midday or 1 o'clock game. The players usually get there at about 9 or 10 o'clock. And with Curtis, he, he, he's a preparer. He prepares, he has a routine, he adjusts and adapts with anything that might come to him about the team they're playing. Um, so he, he, he was rocking it. Um, I, he was excited. I think his adrenaline was the, the pump that helped him get through it all. Um, so on September 29th and 30th, the last two games of the Rocky season, guess who they're playing? The Los Angeles Dodgers. Guess who will be watching those two games? I will be watching those two games. I also believe that the Rockies will continue to move forward and accomplish getting their performance result of a playoff berth through the, um, the um, not underdog, underdog is not the right term for it. Um, well, you know what I'm talking about. they got a slot they've got to get after. They're, they're struggling right now, but I think that, those last two games will be awesome to see that that them, them play. Number one, because it's they're in the same conference, but they could be playing again if uh, the Rockies get uh, what they want uh, to get into the playoffs. Um, I, I just I'm excited. I'm excited to see that. So those are examples of performance results. So let me just summarize those a little bit. <clears throat> performance results. Curtis was put in a situation. Time frame. Sudden changes, he had to adapt and readjust. He needed to renew and recover. He needed sleep, he needed some food. He's on planes flying from New York to Detroit, time changes, all those kind of things. He did it. And in fact, he did it to a level that he hit a blooper single to, to activate the Dodgers. They were behind by a run. The Dodgers came back from that point on. The team was excited and, and jazzed, and they won that game at Detroit, Curtis's first game in. Now, I haven't had a chance to talk to Curtis to ask him about anything more specific about what he did to renew and recover, but I know that that athlete, that professional, has a routine that helped him to put together and maintain a mindset with his skills that allowed him to then apply his mental conditioning routines so that he had a hot, the highest possibility of delivering performance results unique to him and what he could contribute. I'm excited. I'm excited for September 29th and 30th when the LA Dodgers come to town. I may have to wear two hats. You know, like maybe make a hat that's got two sides because uh, it's going to be a great time to watch them compete against one another. Because uh, everybody uh, in that league uh, with the Dodgers has been fought, you know, fighting the San Francisco Giants and uh, Arizona and the Rockies. It's, it's been, we have one of the toughest. Uh, team league setups of anybody in baseball, American League, National League, they are really, they're competitive. Whoever is going to play anybody who comes out of that, that league of the, the Dodgers and the Rockies and, the, and Arizona in the playoffs is going to be 
is going to have their hands full. Uh, and the performance results will be process oriented. It's going to be, I, I love the playoffs in the World Series because small ball becomes the word of the day. We're coming up, speaking of small ball, coming up towards the end of the show. Um, and I don't want to forget uh, saying thank you to everybody that helps me get to, get get me where I'm at. Um, I'm really blessed to have a wonderful partner, um, my wife, and uh, a great uh, technical supporter and partner here. Um, Henry, hats off to you and the, the folks at KUHSDenver.com. You're great to be around. Uh, I want to also emphasize again, August 26th, uh, from uh, actually noon to 6, the Kids Zone Art Festival is open. That's free for the... Um, Cultural Revival, the first annual Cultural Revival, the ET Fest, and uh, you're going to have some talent there from uh, seven to, or, yeah, from seven to ten. Thirty-five dollars for a concert with these talents: Hazel Miller, Face, Chris Daniels, and the Kings, trying to bring that music, that feeling, that environment, so the performance results are lots of smiling faces at uh, <clears throat> the uh, Elitch Theater, hosted by Historic Elitch Theater and Bliss Fest 333. Uh, check it out. Good times. Well, I'm your host, Lowell Whiteman of 360 Mindset Performance Talk. Uh, every week you can check me out on my uh, Facebook page, 360 Mindset, and get a little glimpse of Extra Point. Every week we do an Extra Point. Glad to be here, helping you out. Thanks, my international folks out there. Um, I'm about ready to say uh, goodbye to you, but as I do every every time I'm with you, we got to uh, end it with... Uh, uh, where's my little, well, I was going to end it with that. Where'd it go? Well, Henry, I'm just going to end with whatever music I've got there. That looks pretty good, Henry. We're going to end with that. Shalimar, a night to remember. I, I'm going to have lots of nights to remember. So saying goodbye, Henry. I didn't put my music up the way I wanted to, but uh, that's okay. Because KUHS Denver is all about music. Thanks, people. I'm glad to see you out there. Enjoy. Have a great day today. Be safe.